Hello and welcome to another edition of Ask Guillem. Uh, to be honest, the questions are getting better and better. Uh, you obviously are following Spanish football very closely and the Premier League in, in some cases too. And, uh, and that helps because uh, it allows me to, uh, in some cases, you ask the questions that I not, don't know the answer of. So uh, it forces me to, um, to make calls. Uh, I'll, I'll let you into a WhatsApp, or a, for instance, that answers one of your questions. Uh, this WhatsApp came up after I put the question, after I got it from you. So there you are. That's how, it, that's how it's working at the moment. And, uh, and I'm really, really enjoying it. So let's go for it. Uh, the first one is from uh, Leo Numero Uno One. Uh, and he says, did Messi really stop contract talks? If so, do you think there is any chance he can force Bartomeu to call early elections? How do you hold elections with COVID online voting? Well, um, there won't be necessarily there is online voting, but people are in the streets now of Spain, so uh, there'll be the opportunity to vote if that was the case. But uh, there won't be uh, early elections. Uh, Barcelona wants to, the board wants to make sure that financially everything is sound before they uh, leave. Because according to the rules, that uh, the statutos of the club, the rules and the, um, the, 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 the things that have to be followed, basically you cannot leave the club with uh, debts. Uh, so they require still next season to make sure that that's the case. Otherwise, the directors, uh, telling a long story short, the directors will have to pay themselves. They will have to put money for those uh, to pay for those debts. This is insured. So there's no rush for elections to take place. But did Messi really stop contract talks? Yes. He, as you know, had until May to tell Barcelona that he didn't uh, want to stay. If he didn't say anything, it meant that it all continued and the, um, the contract got renewed, which it did, as uh, Barcelona did not hear from Messi, as everybody expected. But now we've got a whole year, 12 months, to actually um, see what, happen, what happens. And, and I think that's a little bit the message from uh, Leo Messi. Let's see what happens. Because there are things that, um, not only to Messi, but others, uh, don't look right somehow. Uh, it's a, it's a long list of, uh, of things that uh, perhaps Messi is disappointed with the club about uh, and uh, also with the fact that he gets accused of all kinds of things, uh, choosing players, choosing managers, and uh, basically on the back of not great results either, three draws in, uh, in, in the first six games after the, um, the confinement and now it's three draws in seven, uh, has meant that they have gone from being two points ahead of Real Madrid to actually possibly not winning the league. Football, a game, a tactical move, uh, a performance could change everything. So imagine in a year how many games there are and how many things can change. But um, yes, Messi has said no more negotiations for now. We'll talk later on. I don't think that necessarily means pressure for elections, but it's pressure to the president quite clearly. And everybody's got to be on the toes, making sure that they get a strong enough squad for next season. If it fails this season, Barcelona to win the Champions League, to win the league, then they'll need to reinforce themselves. And Messi wants to see if it still is a competitive team. So um, on that, you have heard, of course, that uh, Pjanic has got to uh, Barcelona. Let me tell you that he had uh, Juventus created two other possibility of offers. One from Chelsea, and the swap was with Jorginho, and another one with PSG. And there were a couple of players that would have gone to Juventus. When Pjanic found out about that, and I think he found out from Barcelona, Pjanic said, don't worry, I'll sort this out. Went to Juventus and said, either I stay or I go to Barcelona. Juventus needed to, be this, to do the swap for that financial uh, engineering that we've been talking about. So um, that is one of the things, one of the assets of this Barcelona. Lautaro Martinez is exactly the same. He's told Barcelona, I'm happy to come. The personal agreement is in place. Barcelona are very, very positive that it will happen. It will require a swap of players. But um, in any case, it is something that they're very positive. It will happen. On the 7th of July, we hear uh, he's... he's 
the limit to pay the 111 million euros of his buyer clause. Um, but still sounds like a lot, doesn't it? In any case, um, Barcelona are very, very positive. Don't seem to be in a terrible rush for it. Uh, so obviously they know something that we don't know. But in any case, they feel that Inter will negotiate. And then you start thinking about it. How can you convince Messi to actually be happy at Barcelona? And one way is to say to him, forget all this drama that we're hearing in the media. Uh, Barcelona are in a good place. Follow me here. Look, the got um, Todibo could have been a centre back that Barcelona were happy with, but they got but they they let him go in a way because they've got somebody else in Araujo that they really trust. Twenty one year old uh, centre back that they really confident he could make the jump. Plus Eddie Garcia of Manchester City, and I think there is a question on that from Javier Lara. Uh, what's the contractual situation of Ari Garcia? Is there any possibility that finishes in the summer at Barcelona? Right, let me just share with you a WhatsApp because I asked about that and the answer is the player wants to come to Barcelona. City knows about that and City is talking uh, to Barcelona uh, with the possibility of selling the player because, of course, they know that in a year's time he will go for free. But in terms of personal uh, details with the player, everything is in place. That's what, I, that's what I've been told. Which, um, which obviously is, uh, is good news for Barcelona because yet again, another youngster that can come in and play the Barcelona way. Eric, uh, sorry, uh, De Jong, Frank, Frankie De Jong, Ansu Fati, Ricky Puig, Alenia, uh, Trinchao, who comes from uh, Sporting Braga for um, 30 million euros. Uh, who's doing really well in the last six months, actually. So scoring, assisting, uh, has got pace, dribbling ability, runs into space, a lot of the things that Barcelona need. Uh, and Sufati, Ricky Puig, it's not for me. Um, Lautaro Martinez. And what does that sound like? Does that sound all of a sudden like the transition has been taking place? Now, of course... Uh, Managerial, the managerial situation, which somebody else asks about. By the way, it doesn't, uh, that transition doesn't involve Thiago returning to Barcelona, but we'll talk about Thiago in a minute. Christopher Buche is saying, what does Xavi's new contract mean for Barcelona? Is it an extra year of experience and can he convince Messi to stay beyond 2021? Right. Xavi has renewed, or the contract of Xavi has been renewed and has been announced by Al Sadd, his, uh, his club in in Qatar. And the thing is, this contract was actually sorted out months ago, agreed months ago, signed months ago. But Al Sad, with all the rumors about the Barcelona contact in Xavi to come in, in September, in August, um, they decided to do this. Now, there is a trick uh, because there is a clause uh, in, by which if Barcelona comes and actually wants Xavi, uh, then he can go. Not a problem. Um, would he go? This situation is so tense, I think, in Barcelona. There is so, so many doubts about uh, in which direction, direction Barcelona is going that if he had been fans at the stadium, you may have seen already elections, already tension, already pressure, so much so that uh, you know things may have happened. But no fans until September. But um, as I explained um, last week, I think it was, Kike Setien hasn't got the trust of everybody. In fact... I tell you a story which I wrote for uh, for a sport in my column. Uh, basically, um, after the draw against Delta, uh, there were big words exchanged and shouting between players and manager. Uh, and basically, the manager said, "Look, we cannot continue like this. You can get rid of me, meaning the players. You can get rid of me. Not a problem, because I heard that you've done that before. Big words. And uh, but I think if we all get together." We actually could have a good season. Uh, there is the Champions League, four victories, and uh, and you win the Champions League. That's 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 exactly that. So um, surprisingly, in a way, everybody reacted to that, including Pique, who put a tweet out saying, "Come on, we are Barcelona. We cannot put our heads down. We have to keep fighting." And uh, everybody seems to um, put their heads around the fact that yes, this is the manager. Not everybody trusts him, but um, it's the manager they've got. Then they got a draw against Atletico Madrid, 
and it was a, a game that Barcelona could have won. Uh, but then they beat Villarreal very, very easily. And you saw the, the best Griezmann of the season, perhaps, in a, in a diamond-shaped midfield with Messi in the front of it and then with um, Luis Suárez and Griezmann in front of him. That could be the solution. Uh, of course, it needs, it requires a lot of dynamism and energy from the wings, from the fullbacks. But in any case, it worked really well against Villarreal. Let's see if it works somewhere else. But positive indications that uh, the team is refocusing again after all that clash. Uh, and it could be a turning point for Barcelona. We will see. In any case, for next season, if you're the chairman of Barcelona and you feel that there is, you are in a weak position, there's one way to sort everything out. is to actually forget that you didn't end up so well with Xavi in January. Xavi wanted to a uh, structure to impose not only uh, himself as a coach, of course, and, and his assistants, but a structure that the club didn't want to change. Maybe they find a common ground. And also you um, kill two birds with one stone because not only you get Xavi as a manager, you kill the hopes perhaps of um, uh, Victor Fon, the favourite candidate to perhaps win the elections, uh, as he is very closely linked to Xavi and wants to bring Xavi in charge. But if Xavi comes earlier... And the fact that he was negotiating Xavi with Barcelona means that perhaps he will listen to Barcelona again. Um, all that means that, uh, you know, it takes the um, um, the sail out of the wings of Victor Fon. Is that the expression? We'll see. Uh, but in terms of convincing Messi to stay beyond 2021, we will have to see. K.U says strike a situation at Arsenal. Should, should they keep, like I said, an Obama Young? Who are some alternative targets? Well, I want to talk about Aubameyang Mayang quickly because um, Barcelona considered him in January with Timo Werner as well and Rodrigo. Eventually, they went with, with Breadweight as uh, the clubs didn't want to negotiate with them. But of course, now the contractual situation of, of Aubameyang Mayang means that uh, they could also be interested if Lautaro Martinez doesn't get to Barcelona. But because they are so convinced that they will, that Bar Lautaro will come to Barcelona, hence Aubameyang Mayang. Uh, opening negotiations again with Arsenal. So it looks like he could stay. Uh, but again, we have to keep an eye on that. Simon Rollerson says how La Liga is delivering a better product post-COVID than the Premier League. I don't know how you calculate that. Uh, I am happy with what I've seen from La Liga. I mean, we've had to watch every game in La Liga TV, available to for all of you, if you want, in the UK anyway. And, uh, and it has been good games, physically strong. Uh, a lot of the teams finished tight at the end, but also the tempo has been quite high. Uh, there's been goals. Um, the, the later the game, the more the goals. As in, you know, when it's hot and um, uh, perhaps that affects uh, matters and when it's less heat, uh, teams to obviously use more energy. But the fact that it's been substitutions and uh, they've been used quite cleverly means that the football has been... Quite good, to be honest. I don't know how you compare it with the Premier League, but um, I'd say La Liga should be pleased with what, what's happened. Thiago to Barcelona, Fanati 11, and Curtis Weiss says Thiago to Liverpool. Okay. I'll get my notes on that. Um, right. Thiago is leaving Bayern Munich. That's the first thing to say, and, uh, and that's been confirmed by three different sources, so he's leaving Bayern Munich. Um, now... I've been told that he'll he'll go to the Premier League. That's what he wants. Either Liverpool, Manchester United, or Arsenal. That's what he wants. Now, uh, Liverpool, I've been asking, and what I'm getting is that it's, it's doesn't, it doesn't match the plan. And the plan is no spending this summer, uh, especially for a player in a position that they've got lots of players already. So when it gets published by the by Bild, the German newspaper, that um, uh, you know that he that he's going to go to Liverpool or that he thinks he stole his teammates or etc. It's just rumors. Bayern Munich and Liverpool have not spoken about Thiago. What I'm getting is that Liverpool are still thinking of not spending, and they don't think he's going to go to Liverpool. Now then you've got Manchester United or Arsenal. So uh, we'll have to see. But that's what I hear so far. Suvrajit is also who is likely to replace Satyan at the end of the season as part of his question. And uh, uh, although he prefers him being in charge for the 2021 season, I just don't see it. 
if he wants the Champions League, obviously everything changes, but I just don't see it from what I sense in terms of um, the relationship he's got with the players. Uh, uh, him and his coaching staff, I think they will prefer Xavi to be in charge. In fact, when Valverde got the sack, the message that the changing room got was that Xavi was going to replace Valverde. So there was no much protest on the departure of Valverde because they thought, all right, if uh, if they get rid of him, at least we've got Xavi. But Xavi never came. Any truth in uh, Borussia uh, Dortmund wanting £120 million pounds for Sancho? Euros, but yes, that's what they like. That's where they stand at the moment. They like an answer by sometime in August, uh, but the sooner the better, and then they can plan ahead. To be honest, the, the situation, and I know this from the Sancho's uh, side, is that with COVID and uh, how the market has changed, has made things less urgent. So still a possibility, and if anybody can spend that kind of money, perhaps Manchester United, perhaps, I doubt it, very much doubt it. But in any case, um, it'll have to be much lower Manchester United are going to agree something with, with Borussia Dortmund and Borussia Dortmund don't want to go much lower than that. So it seems like they're miles apart. And Sancho's keeping, a, keeping abreast of the situation, but looking from the distance at the moment. Uh, what else? Oh, we've got everything. I think I've covered everything. Uh, so more next week.